Okay, so moving to step three, you can see that we're going to be installing the suspension stays, and this is the on-off switch battery box thing, and this here, I believe, will be for the rear suspension uh, that the shocks will attach to. So there are all of the screws that we're going to need, and over here I've put the pieces that we're going to need for this as well. Uh, and the black um, suspension pieces. So let's go ahead and start installing those. Okay, so let's start with one of them. You can see that the notch that's in the metal needs to be at the top. We grab one of the longer screws and you can see that the way this is done, and you can see it actually on the other side, the screw goes into the closest notch to the front. So that's going to be into here. And that's going to then attach here. And that'll fit into there. So I'm just going to, again, do this nice and light for now. not screwing it in tight and then the bottom one you can see on this side goes into the farthest facing the rear and the same thing will apply here that's facing the rear and again I'm not going to tighten it all in yet let's put on the next one, so same thing. And same on the back side. And you can see that it's actually fitting into the notches on either side as well. So the screws are in, so I think I'll go ahead and now screw it all the way. And of course, just do a last check, just to make sure that nothing's shifted, make sure that it's all in. I always kind of do a triple, quadruple check, just to make sure that every time you tighten something, it hasn't loosened something else somewhere else. And you can see now that those two are not the two main chassis parts are not coming out again. So they're nice, and, it's nice and solid. So there we have the front stays. Uh, and now we'll attach these bits. And you can see on this side, which I guess we'll do first, we're going to attach uh, this. Just gotta make sure I grab the right one. That piece there. And then this is actually going on to that as well. So the screw is going to go through both of those things. So we'll grab one of the, and of course on this side, we're going to use the flanged tapping screw because this is going to sit and hold on the this red piece that you can see that it's going to need to be like this as it goes through. So let's put that on now. So it'll definitely be easier for you to put those in like that 
first. And then because of the other part that has to go in there is you can actually grab that and slide it over and then continue screwing it down, which we'll do now. Okay, so that is that side. I've screwed them in. And now we're gonna work on the other side, which actually is the smaller uh, tapping screws. And they're going to fit right there on either, on either side. So I'll go ahead and screw those two, two down. Okay, so now both sides are on. Uh, I was finding I had to do this off camera because with the camera here, this was in the way um, and I needed more leverage to be able to screw these in because they are tapping screws. Uh, but other than that, those parts are now on. And now we can move to step four, which you can see is installing the servo uh, and the speed controller. So I'll just get all of this ready and then we'll put these in. Okay, so I've got all the parts ready for step four. I've got the speed controller out and ready to go. I've got the servo ready to go and I've got the two screws that you're gonna need um, for the servo. But here's something we're gonna look at first. And if you remember what I said uh, back when we were putting this chassis together, that these are the two pieces that you're gonna need to screw in the servo. So before I do anything, I'm gonna do a test. And as you can see, when I go to put this in, it won't fit. Um, and like I said before, depending on your servo, this one is not locked. This had a notch which locked it in place. This does not. So what we're gonna to need to do is just sort of shift it up and down and kind of get it to a position that you know is gonna work. So if you put this in now, you can see that it's in, but I need to, I'll need to bring it down a bit now. But it's just to be aware, I wanna get it kind of into the right position just so that so close so close I need to just push up just a touch there we go so that I've got room to play when I go and and put that in because what's going to end up happening is when you attach this to the side of the servo it's going to be harder to actually fit that in so I just want a little bit more play and a bit more room so that I can get that on and off without a problem. Now it's possible that once we put this um, speed controller onto here, I may need to move this up again and then slide it back down into place just so it fits. But just know that this black um, piece is gonna be what you're gonna constantly adjust when you're trying to put the servo in place and that way it'll make it easier and, and if you know that this is what you're adjusting you don't need to worry about the placement of it so much so we'll go ahead and attach the uh, speed controller to this you can see that there's a cut that you need to make and again when you go into bag a you're going to grab this one which you can see now is a perfect fit so i'm just going to cut this to size and then we're going to attach it to the servo. And the other thing to look for is, you can see how they're saying that you don't want this to go too far down um, past the servo itself. Well, it's not a worry because when you look at the TBL2E um, or the TBLO2 
it it's actually well within the guideline so you can see that even no matter where I put this it's actually going to be correct the only thing will be making sure that it's rather relatively center well I'm gonna try and make it a cent as center as I'm gonna try and put it into the center of the servo as much as possible and that way it's out of the way when you go to place it and it's even um, but the up and down vertical there's nothing to worry about it's not it's not long enough um, to interfere so I'm just gonna put this on and then we'll put this into the chassis so as you can see with how the uh, speed controller is to, to attach to the servo I've gone ahead and done that and you can see that I've got it fairly level um, from the top based on what they're showing here um, and you can see that it dips down just a little bit um, and then it's more or less exactly how it's shown right there now there are reasons for this and I've noticed that when you put this into the chassis um, it's gonna sit more or less on an angle so this cable has to come up and then it's free from the chassis so it's not binding um, this one's gonna bind a little bit but that's just the way that it's getting placed into here um, but let me just show you um, when you're putting this in make sure that the servo cable is through the hole first. You also want to make sure that the cable coming off of the speed controller is also through the hole first before you put that in place. And as you can see, um, it's going to be a nice fit and I'll just have to screw that in. I may have to move the black piece up just a touch, but as a whole, it's fine. Now this is going to get fed through the top and I mean all those are going to be fed through the top too but make sure that when you screw this down the other cables are actually at the bottom don't screw this in if you've got this cable um, coming out of the top because you want to have more room when it's going to attach to the receiver which is going to go up here so that's that's the placement so I'll go ahead and screw this down and we'll move on to the next step. So if you look at the diagram for placement, you can see how the wire is coming out and through the hole and up onto the little pla the red plastic piece that we put on there for the on off switch. And then the cable for the battery is going in through um, the other side. So if you look at it from above, this is what it's looking like. You can see that this cable is coming directly off the speed controller through there and then it will attach there um, I think it's probably in the next step and then I've got the battery cable running through that hole um, and out and then the rest of it's just going to be out because that's obviously going to come back here to um, plug into the motor at one point so that is the placement though and you can see that the servo and the receiver i mean the um, speed controller are out of the way so that is done so we can move on to step five which is installing the rc units uh, and we'll go ahead and attach that so i'll just pull together the parts and we'll do this step so i've gone back to step four because i want to quickly show you something as you can see the steering servo is um, for this step and they show you how to put the speed controller to attach it um, and it's in which is what we've done but I've also noticed that when you go to step 5 and it says installing the RC units you can see that the speed controllers there and the servo and the receiver but if you go further down it also shows you putting the speed controller up here and installing electronic speed controller so it's a bit of a weird thing because technically we didn't need to attach anything to the servo we could have just put it up here uh, which is fine and maybe i might have actually chosen to go and put it there uh, part of the reason that i think this is showing it down here is because on the frog um right same chassis you have to put the speed controller down here and the receiver actually gets placed down here because you need to have that room to be able to put the driver figure well on the blackfoot and and you know monster beater 
um, mud blaster, etc. This is free and clear. So I could have actually put the receiver and the electronic speed controller up here, which would have been a lot higher, which meant it was away from more water, debris, etc. So this is a personal preference, I think. Um, I have put it on here just as the instructions were showing, but I could have put it up here like with this diagram. So it's your, it's your choice as to which way you want to go. Um, too late for me in a sense. I don't want to take the whole thing apart for it, so I will leave it where I where I put it, but you could have put it up here as we're going to do with the receiver. So if you look here, these are all the parts that we need. I've got them there. So what we'll do now is I'm going to finish installing that and putting this metal piece uh, right by the other one and putting the receiver on the chassis. Okay, so the second metal bar is in and now I'm going to install this. But remember, take off the old on off plate because you're going to turn this upside down and screw it down there and then there's going to be a sticker that's going to say on off on the side so that's in the way so you want to take off that on off plate okay so there we go step five putting in the receiver the switch and here we go on the the chassis we've got the receiver and the uh, on off switch here and you can see I put the sticker on and you sort of can see underneath um, there's a little bit that says on right there so I've matched it correctly but either way you got the sticker so it doesn't matter anymore so there we are we're now going to move on to step six which is now working on the steering tie rods so for step six, I've got all of the plastic parts ready, uh, and then we've got the ball uh, connectors, and then we have the threaded shafts for the steering. So what we need to do is put together that part and put together the knuckles um, and the connectors uh, and the adjusters onto this part once we've built it. Now. One of the cool things, and I've said this before, is the way Tamiya does their stuff is that you look at that shaft and you look at that image where it says 37 and a half millimeters. Well, technically, if you put on the adjusters exactly how they're showing that diagram, it'll be perfectly sized and it'll be correct. So I'm going to I'm going to go ahead and put those together and we'll take another look at it. Okay, so here we go. I've now attached the ball connectors um, and you can see there they are. I've put them back on the diagram. They're exactly the, the right sizing. So all I need to do now is snap them into place um, and then we can move on to step seven, which is checking the RC equipment. Now, I've already put the batteries into the new controller. Um, you can see here, in terms of the binding screws, if you go to this diagram here, it's showing that if you're using Futaba, use the BA4, which is the Tamiya servo. And then we're gonna just check to make sure that it's in neutral position so that when we put the servo saver on and this and the whole, um, you know, the steering arms, it's going to be correctly um, in place. Now you can see if you're not using Futaba, they have a whole bunch of other options for you um, depending on what you're using. So I'm gonna go ahead and um, just sort of put this part together and then we'll just do a quick RC check to make sure it's in neutral and we'll attach those arms to the servo. So we're gonna do the radio check. So I've turned the, the transmitter on and you can see the servo itself. So when I turn this on, we should see it move or not move depending on whether it's already set in neutral. So let's see what happens. Okay, so you saw it do a little wiggle. It's already in neutral, so we can attach the servo without a problem now. So I'll turn everything back off and we're ready to go. So first we will put this on and in terms of alignment, you want that notch right there to be facing straight back or as straight back as you can. So we'll put that 
on there, which is correct. And then we attach this, which actually, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to, I'm going to take that off and snap it on right away. You can see where that's supposed to go. And then I can put the whole thing on in neutral. So then now it's just a matter of screwing it in. So I'll do that now. Okay, so now it is on and screwed in. So we're ready to go. So we can now move on to step eight. And that means we are going to start building the front axle. So I'll pull everything together for this step.